transformation of sex energy there is one question about time traveling either physically or spiritually i'll just give a hint and speak on this in another session what you are today physically psychologically spiritually is the outcome of your past if you were malnourished you will be malnourished physically it is important that you can introspect if you are getting angry all the time you can trace this anger to somewhere in the past to introspection to meditation buddha had developed the technique called jati samran going back into the past lives one of the psychologists i do not recall his name at the moment he has spoken of primal therapy so that he takes you into the past and tries to correct but he can go only up to the age of 5 beyond that it is not possible and also it is not advisable for a seeker to go or practice this on his or her own you may be flooded with so much of information that you cannot cope with for instance you are trying to explore and you happen to discover that the person that you love so much as your spouse happened to be your mother in the last life how can you live with that thought only that much is allowed to filter in your present that will help you to go forward a lot of that is not necessary for you to know for instance you are traveling you are traveling in a country and in that this is a broad picture you are a traveler in any country you are traveling by road it is a broad picture but you are specifically going to a particular place you can print a google map of that country but that will not help you instead it will confuse you you have to precisely come to the point where you are going from position a to position b only that much road map is necessary for you not the entire map of united states of america if you are traveling there or a whole map of a particular state but you are traveling from in a particular state so from united states you have precisely come down to that particular state maybe new york but new york have out its outskirts it has the metropolitan but even in metropolitan you are traveling to a particular so what you do you use your intelligence to only look at that map which will take you from one place where you are living to the place where you have to visit where you are living is the place where you are at this moment where you have to go is the place where you want to reach in between there is a traveling that you have to do so that much is necessary so that is why it is suggested that this jati samran process is to be done in the company of the master and from time to time through his tavajju master keeps on giving you insights although we are sitting in a congregation but yet still this congregation works differently on different seeker each seeker if i put it like this becomes a reflecting media if i do if i have to use this example when light falls 
the reflection becomes different on each one of them because each one of you is a different strength, different kind of magnifying glass. Just as the different colors absorb the light differently, some reflect back, some absorb. So it happens and when the energy falls, you get some glimpses that you may need to work or it is an indication. It is said about one of the Nakshwandi Sheikh about whose life and works is the part of the present work leads from the Sufi Heart Volume 3 says that he, it was Hazrat Haji Ahmad Ali Khan Rajilla he was suggested to go to a particular master, Hazrat Sayyid Abul Hassan Nasirabadi. The person who told him he was also a Khalifa of Hazrat Abul Hassan Nasirabadi. Haji Ahmad Ali Khan said he is not ready as yet. So this angered the other Sheikh and he told him that you will forget all that you have attained through meditation and it soon happened. Then three consecutive nights he had a similar dream. Three consecutive nights he had a similar dream. One of the boy who is working with me, he has Osho's tarot cards. He pulled out a card the message, the card that came out was the wise fool. Second day he pulled out the card again and again the same thing, the wise fool came out. Third day again the same card pulled out, the wise fool. There is no coincidence that when you shuffle the pack of cards, the same card will come out on three consecutive nights. It is not a coincidence. To have the same dream on three consecutive nights is not a coincidence. It is the energy of the master that is at play. And one should not overlook that. This is how the existence works. If I tell you directly, it may not have an effect. But if it happens to you out of your own efforts through the dream sequence, through pulling out this again, the same thought is coming, then it has a greater impact. And you should not overlook and see the content, what it is, and work. This is how you are given a little glimpses from time to time of your past which may be necessary in the present for you to work on. One person had an unpleasant relationship with her father. She could not reconcile. They were not living together. It was reminded to the person and after some time, the whole approach of that person towards her father changed. So things like these happen in the process of development, in the process of growth. One has to be very alert during these meditation sessions. I recall now our meditation sessions is in 21st century of a different kind of nature, dealing with different kind of seekers. I recall and I happen to be attending some of those sessions where 
after the session, Sufi Bridgman Lal will narrate what had happened in that state through a song or a message. So it happened, my uncle Sufi Omkar Nath came to our hometown and I was, I being the fond of him and the favorite. So we had to go to one of the older persons who lived in our hometown and who was a disciple of Lalaji Sheikh Ramchandra Zulla But he was very straightforward and blunt in his words. We sat down in meditation and after that he narrated the state that has dawned upon him during the meditation which was confirmed by Sufi Onkarna. So I had to show that I had the similar. So I make up something and said I felt like this and this is what was happening. The energy was working on this center. His name was Munshi Madan Mohanla. He looked at me and he said, don't talk rubbish. Nothing like that happened. So you cannot fool a person who knows about it. Now it happened, the situation is different. Whatever is happening or whatever is spoken, it begins to work simultaneously. It is being spoken, those states are coming or the states are coming or when the seekers come, it reflects what is needed to be spoken at, at this moment in order for the benefit of the entire congregation. So if there is any specific thing happening to you, you can send it to me and I will speak. But I will speak still a little bit on this in another session. Transformation of sex energy, there is a question. Would you explain how to use our sexual energy for inner growth or transformation? As it seems to be one of our, one of our main preoccupation in the West and in the East as well. Sex is the energy. So I will not say it is sexual energy. There is no other energy. Sex is only energy that you have got and only name that you have known. The energy can be transformed and become reached to the higher levels. The higher it moves, the less and less sexuality remains in it. And at the peak, it becomes simply love and compassion. You have electricity in your house coming from the national grid. You have water supply installed in your house. Taps are put in different locations. Electrical connections, bulbs are in different places. To identify these, we call it a bathroom tap. So if any particular tap is non-functional and you call the plumber and you inform him the, the, the tap in the bathroom number one is not functional. So there is nothing like a bathroom tap. But it is the location that points out that this tap which is non-functional is in the bathroom or the electrical switch or the connection that needs to be checked. In the same way, basically the energy that is existential bioenergy remains stored at the base center. From there, it, its journey or the movement has to begin. So it is identified by that name. But when its journey begins, its location changes. And with the location also its effect on your consciousness begins to change. And at the peak it becomes simply love and compassion. The ultimate flowering 
we can call as divine energy but the base the seat remains sex so sex is the first lowest layer lowest place where the energy reflects and there it is called sex energy and god is the topmost layer but the same energy moves it goes through the different channels the water running through various channels into your house maybe it has to pass through the bathroom first and then come to the kitchen but for kitchen purposes you will not take the water from the bathroom tap but it is running through the bathroom to reach the living to reach the kitchen area you have closed that outlet but water is running inside the pipe or something like this we can call the water channel to reach to the kitchen area so when you need the water in the kitchen for cooking or any other purpose you open the kitchen tap the water that is running through that also this we know very well but we do not know how to open the channels of the energy when it is in the flow the entire process is the process of transformation of that energy the first thing to be understood is that do not divide energies once you divide then duality is created once you divide then conflict and struggle is created once you divide energies you are divided then you will be for or against sex i am neither for nor against sex because i do not divide i say sex is the energy sex is the way the energy is at the base and it is recognized as you can call that energy x sex is the name of that x energy the unknown energy when you are using it only for only as biological reproductive force it becomes divine once it is freed from the biological bondage once it becomes non physical then it is love of jesus or compassion of buddha the west is much obsessed today because of christianity 2000 years of christian suppression of sex energy has made the western mind too much obsessed with it first for 2000 years the human mind was obsessed how to destroy it you can neither kill nor destroy it one thing is certain the energy cannot be destroyed it can only be transformed and the process of transformation of the energy is a spiritual process based on your understanding no energy can be destroyed certainly energy can only be transformed there is no way to destroy the energy nothing can be destroyed in this world it can only be transformed changed moved into a new realm and dimension destruction is impossible you cannot create a new energy and you cannot destroy any old energy creation and destruction are both beyond you this is something which god has not given man they cannot be done scientists agree to this not even a single atom can be destroyed for 2000 years christianity was trying to destroy sex energy religion consisted of becoming absolutely without sex 
that created madness. The more you fight, the more you suppress, the more sexual you become. And then sex moves deeper into your unconscious, it poisons your whole being. So if you read the lives of the Christian saints, you will see they were obsessed with sex. They cannot pray and meditate. Whenever, whatsoever they do, sex comes in and they think that the devil is playing its tricks. Nobody is playing the tricks. If you suppress something, you are the devil again. But we have thought of, given the concept that devil is outside. No, it is your own mind that has become devilish. For 2000 years of continuous sex suppression, the West became fed up with it. Suppression was too much. The whole wheel turned now. It is totally a different kind of a state. So is, there is only two things we know. Instead of suppression, indulgence became the new obsession. From one pole of the mind you move to the another pole. The disease remains the same. Once it was a repression and now it is how to indulge more and more in it. But both are sick attitudes. Sex has to be transformed. Neither repressed nor madly indulged. And the only possible way to transform sex is to be sexual with deep meditative awareness which I keep on emphasizing you again and again. It is just the same as I am saying about anger, move into sex, but with an alert, conscious, mindful being. Do not allow sex to become an unconscious force of act. Do not be pulled or pushed by it, move knowingly, understandingly and lovingly whenever the opportunity is there. But make sexual experience a med meditational, meditative experience. Meditate in it. This is what the East has done through Tantra. Tantra is the art of going through the sex experience meditatively as a witness. And once you are meditative in sexual experience or simply you start watching your breath during that, naturally you will become more and more meditative. You will realize that your breathing is becoming calm and then a point will come when you will realize that you are not breathing at all you have attained to this state of meditativeness through that sexual experience. Its duality, its quality starts changing. The same energy which is moving into sexual experience starts moving towards consciousness. You can become so alert in a peak of sexual orgasm as you can as you can otherwise never become. Remember, no other experience is so deep and so absorbing. No other experience is so total. In sexual orgasm, you are totally absorbed. Your whole being vibrates in it. Body and mind both are in it. The thinking is stops completely during the moment of sex. Breathing becomes calm and a point comes where you do not, when you realize that you are not breathing even. Even for a single second, 
when the algorithm reaching its peak thinking stops completely because you are so total that you cannot think. In a sexual orgasm you are. Being is there without thinking. In this moment, if you can become alert and conscious, then sex becomes the door towards the divine. And if in this moment, you can become alert, that alertness can be carried to the other moments and other experience also. It can become a part of you, then eating, walking, doing some work, you can carry the same alertness. Through sex, the alertness has touched your deepest core. It has penetrated you. Now you can carry it wherever you go and whatever you do, it has become a beacon light with you. You have got a torch of awakening that you can always carry with you. And if you become meditative, you will come to realize something new. On 14th of August this year, which was the death anniversary of Lala Jiva Zilla Talalu, I began the leaves from the Sufi Heart Volume 3, the Renaissance in Nakshbandi Tarikat. I wasn't sure how it will begin, but there was a torch of awakening that I carry with me as I plunged into it through intuition, through kashp. I was able to look deep into the past, starting from the year 1700 to we have reached this period of 1856 when Sayyid Abul Hasan Nasidabadi died. It is now effortless. 24 hours that the screen continues to move. I have other things to do. So when I am doing the other things, the consciousness only remains of that. And when I get time, I go on to the desk, open the page, write certain pages and this is the first draft which has not been edited or anything formatted into a presentable form with subheadings which is important. The incidents one after the other keep on surfacing. So if you become meditative, you will come to realize something new. Now you can carry it wherever you go and whatever you do. That fact is that it is not sex anymore. Instead it gives you bliss. It is not sex that gives you ecstasy. Rather it is the thoughtless state of mind, the total involvement in the act that gives you a blissful feeling. It is not the sexual orgasm that gives you fulfillment. It is the state, that particular act at that moment that comes, the state of thoughtlessness, a state wherein you are not breathing at all. It is that state that gives you the blissfulness. It is that state which gives you an experience of totality. totality. A blissful experience and that blissful experience, sex was the means, but through the sex, the act has gone into different stages. You are, you are taken to a state of thoughtlessness, you are taken to the state of breathing becoming 
so normal that as if you are not breathing at all. The breathing is stopped, the thinking is stopped. So it is the outcome of these two outcome of these two states that a certain amount of blissfulness has come into you and you feel that this blissfulness has come because of the sexual act of orgasm. Once you understand this, then sex will be needed less and less because that thoughtless state of mind can be created even without, without it. That state of breathlessness can be created even without sex. This is what meditation means. And that totality of being can be created without sex. Once you know that, the same phenomena can happen without sex. Sex will be needed less and less. A moment will come when sex will not be needed at all. You have not repressed sex. Instead, it is the transcendence through sex of sex. Transcendence of sex through sex. Remember, sex is always dependent on the other. So during the moments of sex, bondage and slavery remains within you. Once you can create this total orgasmic phenomenon without any dependence on anybody else, when it has become an inner source, you are independent and free. This is what had happened in that in, uh, talk where there was a question from a seeker that the two people are involved in the act. One becomes meditative and other feels diff differently. The, it depends on the level of the individual group. So the male person was transformed and the female got stuck. So you can come out of that bondage. This is what is meant when in India we say only a brahmachari, the celibate, an absolute celibate person can be free. Now he is not dependent on anybody else. His ecstasy is on his own. For your entertainment, you are dependent on this or that. But you remember that you are, the, you are the encyclopedia. You are the totality of entertainment. The moment you look into yourself, you can open any channel and can get entertained. Sex disappears through meditation. I repeat. Sex disappears through meditation and in the process of disappearing, it gives you something more profound, more deep, something that is unimaginable by you. However, this does not destroy the energy. Remember, energy is never destroyed, only the form of the energy is changed. Now it is no more sexual and when the form is no more sexual, you become loving. So really a person who is sexual cannot love. His love can only be a show. His love is just a means towards sex. A person who is sexual uses love just as a technique towards sex. It is a means. A sexual person cannot really love, he can only exploit the other and this is what happens. The husbands and wives exploit one another. In the hands of a sexual person, love becomes just a way to approach the other. A person 
who has become non-sexual and energy is moving with him, has become auto-ecstatic. His ecstasy is his own. His ecstasy is not dependent on anything. Such a person loves for the first time. His love will be a constant showering, a constant sharing, and a constant overflowing. But to achieve this, you are not required to be against sex. To achieve this, you have to accept sex as part of life, of natural life, move with it, only move with more consciousness. Consciousness is the bridge, the golden bridge, from this world to the other, from hell to heaven, from ego to the divine. And that is the only way that you can transform the sexual energy, allow it to move to higher altitudes.